pop quiz. What is the most common way that scuba divers enter the water? Well, if you read the title, then you would have guessed it. It is the giant stride. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to master the giant stride so you'll be able to get into the water like a pro. Let's get into it. While back roll entry and just wading into the water from the shore are still really common ways for divers to get into the water, the most common way is to giant stride, whether that's off a dock, off a platform, or off the back of a boat somewhere. For a lot of newer divers, it can be a bit unnerving to just have all that heavy gear on, stand right at the edge, toes hanging over, looking straight ahead, not down, and then just taking a big step where you just trust that you're gonna clear the platform properly. I can understand where you might get a little bit nervous about this, but in this video, we're gonna go step by step, breaking down exactly how to do a giant stride. So next time you go to get in the water, you'll have all the confidence you need. Step one, partially inflate your BCD. First, you're gonna wanna make sure all your gear is on, you have your mask, your fins, and you complete your pre-dive safety check with your buddy. Then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and fill up that BCD, and you wanna at least partially inflate it to where it's mostly full, or you can go ahead and fill it all the way. It won't really matter, and there's an overpressure valve that you might hear poof a little bit, but go ahead and fill that BCD up. So when you do get into the water, you'll pop right back up to the surface. Step two, place your fins over the edge. Next, you're gonna step up to the edge of the platform or the back of the boat that you're standing on. And you're gonna wanna put your fin tips and toes as far over the edge as you feel comfortable with. Definitely keep the weight on your feet and whether that's more on the heels of your feet and just kind of holding yourself there or holding onto a rail to help steady you or have someone hold your hand to help steady you there. You wanna basically hang those toes over the edge and that'll allow you to step off fully and clear the platform. If you stay too far back, you might not clear the platform and you don't want to bang your tank, believe me. I know this can be a little unsettling if you're afraid of heights or anything. So again, just steady yourself on a rail or with the dive guide next to you, the DM, whoever it is that's there helping you get into the water, hang those toes over, Make sure you hold on to something and get ready for the next step. Step three, scan the area below you. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look downward and check the water around the area you're about to step into. The last thing you wanna do is go ahead and enter the water and land right on top of another diver who maybe was having some problems and hadn't cleared out of the area yet, or maybe they just started their descent right next to the boat instead of moving to the side first. More on that later, but make sure you're, wherever you're going into, you can see what's in front of you and what's down below you so you know you're not gonna drop right on top of somebody. Step four, place your regulator in your mouth. Now that you know you're clear to enter, put that regulator in your mouth and take a breath or two off of it. You're gonna be fine. Again, your toes are hanging over the edge. I know it might be unsettling, but just a deep breath or two with that regulator in, you're gonna be in the water in no time. Step number five, hold your waistband. If you have a weight belt, take your left hand and hold that over the buckle. The last thing you wanna do is jump into that water, have that weight belt come undone and drop right to the bottom. And now you're not able to go on your dive because you're not able to sink. And you also just lost some lead and your boat captain might be a little unhappy with you for that. You'll also wanna use this left hand to cover the BCD waist strap. So just kind of in one motion covering both of those. And if you do have a loose console or like a console computer or SPG, Typically you would wanna tuck that away somewhere, but for entering the water, go ahead and hold it across your waist along with your waist strap and that waistband for the uh, BCD itself and just kind of hold all of those in place so they don't come undone and they stay close to your body. They don't get banged around or anything like that. Step six, place your right hand on your regulator and your fingers on your mask. Now you'll wanna take your right hand and place it over your regulator and mask to hold those in place when you get in the water. You'll basically want the palm of your hand to be right against the regulator, press inward and then the fingertips pressed hard against the top of your mask or against the mask uh, glass itself and that way your mask and regulator will stay in place because when you drop into the water that water force is going to push upward and it will absolutely knock your regulator loose or knock your mask off if you aren't careful so hand over the mask and regulator to keep those in place some agencies will tell you that you can also put your hand over your regulator and uh, your left hand over the back of your mask strap I think that's not as useful if you have the weight belt or the waistband and things like that. If you learn that way, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I would rather protect my waistband and make sure my BCD stays in place while making sure my air and my mask stays in place so I can breathe, I can see, and I have my flotation device. So whatever suits you will work for that, but 
Again, I recommend right hand over regulator and mask, left hand over the waistband. Step number seven, look forward, not down. Now you're ready to go. You wanna go ahead and look straight ahead. Look at the horizon line, look all the way out as far as you can, straight ahead, not downward. We've already checked to make sure the area is clear. We don't want to look down because I'm telling you now, you will look down and you will face plant right into the water or worse, you won't clear the full platform and your tank will smack that and that might bump the back of your head. Uh, it can cause a really bad headache, maybe a bump on the back of your head and it might even cut you if you aren't careful. So clear the platform by looking straight ahead as far out and just trust, okay? Trust with the next step. Step number eight is to step out and push off not jump. Now we've gotten to the step where the name of the entry comes into play. We are about to take our giant stride. And for this step, you're going to take a step, one large step forward. And it's gonna feel awkward. You're gonna feel like you're stepping into nothingness and you're about to fall because, well, you are. You wanna step forward. And then with your other foot, you're gonna be pushing because your toes are already over the edge. You're gonna be pushing off and stepping forward and that'll get you to go into the water. You do not wanna jump. You're carrying a lot of heavy gear and jumping won't actually bring you that far out, unfortunately, and you're more likely to bang your tank against the side of the boat or the side of the dock if you jump. Instead, give your knees a break, just take a big step forward and trust the process. You're gonna enter the water just fine. Step number nine, establish positive buoyancy. Since you put air in your BCD before you got into the water, you should come right up to the surface without any issues, but make sure to add a little bit more air into it if need be, or even let a little bit out if you have to, to establish your proper buoyancy where the wing or the BCD jacket isn't you know, pushing your face into the water too much and you're able to just sit and rest comfortably at the surface with positive buoyancy. You don't have to kick to stay at the surface. Step number 10, signal that you're okay. Now that you're all set, make sure that you signal your dive buddy or your boat crew or whoever's still on the dock with you and, and kind of watching you dive that you're okay and that you don't have any problems that you're in the water now. When you're doing the okay, don't just give a hand signal okay, but go ahead and give the big okay where you actually put your hand on top of your head or you do the double hands over your head for a bigger okay. That's a lot more visible and especially on a dive boat when you might be drifting a little bit further away due to a, a small surface current or something like that. You wanna make sure that the boat captain or whoever the crew is that's watching you can see the okay sign and they might not see the little hand signal instead. So big okay. We're ready to go on to the final step, clear the area. Now that you're in the water, you let everyone know that you're okay and you have your buoyancy, it's time to get out of the way so the next diver can come in. Now, this might mean that you just start descending immediately and start going to the dive site, depending on conditions that might be the best approach. I know that we do that off the coast of North Carolina, for example, uh, but it could also be that you're going to a meetup point. So maybe you're all going to the mooring line, maybe you're going to the trail line behind the boat, maybe you're gonna go up to the anchor and then follow that down to the dive site, but meet with your dive buddy and your dive group if you're diving in a full group, descend down together following your five point descent and then move on to your dive site. All right, so you did your giant stride, you've cleared the area and met up with your group or your dive buddy and you're ready to navigate to the dive site. But how do you actually get there? Well, don't worry, in this video, I tell you how to use a compass for underwater navigation so you can get to and from where you're trying to go. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.